Tonight's story is the story of a snowman who came alive. Once upon a time, it was the middle of winter, just after Christmas, and the little boy called Johnny had received all his presents from Father Christmas. On Christmas Eve, he had hung his stocking up at the end of his bed. And when he woke up, it was full of nice presents. When he went downstairs, there were more presents under the Christmas tree. But he said, a very right? I'm sorry? But he's... He's a great good boy. Yes, exactly. He'd been a good boy. And he noticed that Father Christmas had been in the room because there was a mince pie half eaten and a glass of milk half drunk. And also a carrot. And there was a carrot which had been half eaten by one of his reindeer. Or maybe Father Christmas ate it. We don't really know who ate it, but somebody ate it. Anyway. Under the Christmas tree were lots more presents, so the little boy had a nice time opening his presents and getting very excited. Well, you can imagine the kinds of things he got. For example, he got a Paw Patrol game with a lorry to put all the Paw Patrol animals in and lots of cars. He also got a railway set with an electric train which goes round and round and goes doot doot. And also, also, the things have, also things go straight and also things go like that and it can change the direction if it goes the direction. Exactly, the railway line had some points where you can press to make the train go left or right or straight on, or straight on or left or right, depending on the, on the, on the points. So it had some points to change the direction of the train if wanted and also came with some little trees and a railway station to put on the edge of the railway line to make it look just like real. And then the boy could add other things of his own like his, his, some of his small cars to give, like make roads and people and things like that that he had from his other toys uh, to make the railway line seem just like a real railway line in real life. And the train was powered by batteries. Yeah. So that was another thing the boy got for Father, from Father Christmas. But anyway, we hadn't got to the bit about the snowman yet. Well, do you know what happened when he looked out of the window? Yeah. What? Uh, it snowed, it snowed his beard. It, it had snowed in the night. His, his snowman had, his snowman he built was, it came daylight. Yeah, but we haven't got to that bit yet. Let's start with a bit about looking out of the window. When he looked out of the window, the whole garden was white, covered in white. And he said, Daddy, what's that? Where's the grass gone? Where are the trees gone? Why are all the trees white? Why is everything white? So Daddy explained to him, my little boy, that, Johnny, that is snow. What's snow, Daddy? That's so Daddy explained. It's when up in the sky, it's very, very cold and the clouds are starting to freeze and they, they form crystals of ice, which is snow. Very, very fine, thin crystals and they float down gently to the earth like this, fluttering down like a butterfly, but fluttering lower and lower and they land on top of each other to make snow. And when you step in snow, you make deep holes with your feet into the snow because it's very soft. What's snow made of, Daddy? Said Johnny. So Daddy water. explained. Ex exactly. Uh, way cold water. It's, it's made of frozen water, it's, isn't it? It's, it's, it's actually, it's really frozen in water. Yes, because as we know, most substances have three states. Liquid, which is like water. Solid, which is like ice or snow, and gas, which is like the steam which comes out of your kettle. So, Daddy explained that it's actually the solid state of water. It's frozen water. It's 
or, although it's really more like moisture, which is kind of water itself, which is frozen into ice, uh, uh, into snowflakes. And the snowflakes had fluttered down from the sky and landed and made I, the whole garden look white. I, I don't, I really don't find any snowflakes when it snows. Well, if you look out of the window when it's snowing, you'll see the snowflakes. Um, anyway, when they settle down, you can't see them on when they're all packed together on the snow. But if you saw them coming down, you'd see them coming down very slowly and fluttering down. Anyway, Daddy said to his little boy, would you like to go and make a snowman? And he <laughs> said, oh, yes, please, Daddy. So, the little boy... When, when it finish, all the come alive. It will do, but we'll get to that bit soon. So the little boy put on his anorak, put on his scarf, put on his hat, put on his gloves, put on his big snow boots and his snow trousers and went out into the garden with his daddy. And daddy start, packed some snow together very tightly and started to roll it. And do you know what that happened? Made the big snowman. If you roll a snowball, it gets bigger and bigger. The more you roll it, the he bigger it gets. The first snowman was a huge snowman. They built a, a snowman like our snowman, which is, I think, is still outside, like, which is still outside. It was just like our snowman. So Johnny and his daddy pushed the, the ball further and further, and as they pushed it, it got bigger and 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 bigger until it was bigger than Johnny. And then it was bigger than Daddy. And yeah. then it was so big that even Daddy but, couldn't push it anymore. Daddy was bigger than Johnny. Then it was bigger than and Mommy. Then it was bigger than Daddy. That's right. And soon it was so big, even Daddy couldn't push it anymore. Oh, and Johnny and Daddy tried to push it together, but, but no luck. They couldn't push it. It was too heavy. Yeah. So they had to leave it there and then make the snowman's head. Yeah. So they got another ball of snow and started rolling that until it was so big it was almost impossible to lift. But luckily Johnny just managed to heave it up on top of the big snowball and put it there. And Johnny said, but Daddy, it doesn't look like a snowman because it's got no eyes, no mouth and no nose. Aha, said Daddy. Because, because, because he did know do a sentence on the, some decoration in for the Christmas tree and the table. I don't like for the snowman. This is the point. What could we use for eyes? Well, we could use pieces of coal, we could use stones, or in this case, luckily, there were a few decorations left over from the Christmas tree, like balls, which Daddy could stick into the head just where the eyes should be to make eyes. And for a nose, most people use a carrot for a nose, but they didn't have any carrots, but luckily he had a long, pointy, Christmas decoration, yes. which looks just the shape of a nose. It, it was like a nose. Exactly. It, it was like a carrot, and it, but it was the also for the, the Christmas tree. Of, of, it made a big red nose. And then, what we do for the mouth? Well, Daddy tried to cut a mouth with his fingers in the snow, but you couldn't really see it. Then Daddy had an idea. Why don't we use a stick? Yes, so a, a stick which a stick which is like this. A stick a, which is broken in the middle to make a smiling shape. A, a, a stick which is like this. Which, That's right. Which, a stick which is bent in the middle, and then Daddy patted it down and covered it with snow on the outside so it would stay in place, and it made a lovely mouth. And then Daddy thought of some more things to uh, make the snowman look His real. Buttons. Buttons, exactly. And so I think they put only one button, I think, because there weren't any more buttons. Well, that's what happened in our garden. But in this story, the little boy found lots of little uh, Christmas tree decorations they didn't need, and we made buttons out of them. The Daddy and the little boy. And then Daddy said, "But won't you be cold?" And the little boy said, oh yes, what can we do to keep him warm? So Daddy said, I know. A let's, scarf. Let's put a scarf on him. Oh, and, and a hat. And a hat. He, he put he put his hat on the on top of of the, uh, the snowman. Well, to start with, Daddy thought it would be a good idea to use a flower pot for the head. Flower. 
but that looks silly. So Daddy took a cap and put a cap on top of the flower pot, and then it looked much more, more like a, a hat. And I put a scarf around the slimmer's neck to keep him warm. See. But then the little boy Johnny said, but what about arms and legs? And Daddy looked at the snowman, and indeed the snowman had no arms and no legs. So what? So one day while he was asleep, he put the arms and the legs on. So Daddy thought of getting some sticks to, or plank, or or logs to use as arms and legs. But anyway, he, let's go say it was sticks in this case. In our garden, we used uh, logs from the fireplace, but we're going to use thinner sticks in this story. So Daddy got some twigs to make the arms and the legs and stuck them on the snowman and yeah. then took a photograph of the snowman with the little boy and it looked lovely. Now, to cut a long story short, the little boy had to go to the crash. He was only four years old, just past his birthday, which was just before Christmas. It was his birthday. 22nd of December was his birthday. four years old. Only four years old. Like me. Oh yes, just like you. So the boy went to the crash, and in the crash, told his friends about the snowman and showed the picture of the snowman to all his friends. And what did his friends say? Did they say anything? Yes. What did they say? They said, wow. Did they say, wow? Yes. And what did the teacher say? He, 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 he said, brilliant. Brilliant, okay. So, then... The children play uh, uh, during this. Actually, he said beautiful. Beautiful, okay. And then the children all played in the snow in the middle of the day. And then it was time to go home. And Daddy came to get his little boy. And the little boy immediately rushed to the window to look at his snowman, which was still there in the garden, still had his hat on. And that, well, he now had his hat on and his scarf and his legs and his arms and his eyes and his, and his mouth and his nose. And the snowman looked very comfortable in the garden. So the little boy decided to go to sleep because it was bedtime. So Daddy told him a story, a good night story, and the little boy fell asleep. Now, that's not where the story quite ends, because something then happens. While the little boy was asleep, and it was pitch dark, and he couldn't hear anything, he suddenly heard a noise on the window. What sort of noise do you think it was? It was this sort of noise. It, it, it was, he heard it and it, 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 um, on his front, on, on the garden door. So, there was a very strange noise on the bed, on the, on the window, like, so, almost like a tapping, like this. So he, so he, so he thought he would wake up and see the night. And the tapping got louder. on the window, the little boy sat up in bed and thought, what's that noise? And then he heard it again. So the little boy got out of his bed so, to investigate, uh, so, opened he, his curtains, uh, and opened the window. Look, and no, he not didn't look out the window, he looked through his windows and saw, uh, and saw his nose, his nose, which was nearly there, going to the, with, with, and so the snowman was alive. And that's what he saw when he looked through the window. <laughs> Outside the window was his very own snowman that he'd built with his daddy, standing on the, on the balcony outside the window. So the boy opened the door to have a look at the snowman, and the snowman said, Hello, Johnny. Well, Johnny was very surprised to hear a talking snowman. But he looked and said, uh, Hello, Mr. Snowman. Can you talk? Well, of course I can talk. I'm a snowman. What do you think? Johnny said, well, I don't believe it. I didn't know snowmen could talk. Can't talk? Are you dreaming? Of course we can talk, said the snowman. So Johnny said, well, how did you get up here? Well, how do you think anyone gets up here? I climbed up here with my arms and legs. What else? said the snowman. Well, how was it? Well, uh, well, he climbed up the stairs? No, seems he climbed up the bushes, climbed onto the balcony and got himself on the balcony by basically climbing things, as any snowman does. And, and the little boy said, but surely you'd fall to bits if you climbed. 
Fold the bits? Do you fold the bits when you climb a tree? said the snowman. Of course we don't fold the bits. Oh, said the little boy. But are you alive? Well, do I look dead? said the snowman. No, said the little boy. Well, then I'm alive. If I'm not dead, I must be alive. Can I come in? Uh, well, I suppose so. So the little boy opened the window widely, the wider, and in clambered the snowman. Oh, it's uh, much nicer in here. It's quite warm in here, said the snowman. I tell you what, it's freezing out there. You wouldn't want to go out. The little boy could feel the cold draught coming in from outside. So he quickly shut the window. I didn't know that you were alive. Well, I am. Oh, would you, uh, oh, do you like it in here? Do you like my bedroom, said the little boy? Well, said the snowman, looking round the boy's bedroom and all the pictures on the wall and all the toys. You, my, 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 you've got a lot of toys. Did Father Christmas bring them to you? Yes, said the little boy. It was because I was a very good boy. And then the snowman said, I say, it is nice and warm in here, but I'm feeling a little bit wet now. What's happening? So the boy touched the snowman. Oh my goodness, said the boy. You're melting. You can't come in here. You'll, be, you'll melt. Oh, yes, that's right. So the snowman, I'd better go back outside. Will you come with me? Uh, okay, but it's a bit cold. No, uh, no. Well, said the snowman, bring a blanket. Wrap it round you so you won't get cold. No, 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 because it's uh, bedtime. Well, this is about Johnny, not about you. So Johnny went outside with a blanket wrapped round, uh, round him with the snowman Aww. and they stood on the balcony and they looked up at the moon and the stars. But, Look at that, said the snowman. It's a nice moonlit night tonight, isn't it? Can you see the stars? Oh, yes, said the boy, there's lots of stars. I've never seen so many stars in my life. Well, said the snowman, it's a very clear night. Would you like to go and see some stars with me? See some stars, said the boy. We can't go and see the far stars. They're too far away. When you're with me, said the snowman, nothing is impossible. Hold my hand. So the little boy held one of the snowman's hands. A and, rocket can help you. And suddenly, the snowman and the little boy started flying, holding hands. Up and up and up they went in the air, higher and it higher. Was, it, it was like, like the, the target snowman and the little girl, which I don't know. And, and he was, which I... I and then and him and the snowman the snowman and and, and the girl ooh, okay, went up when when flying is this like that so that's what happened and as they went higher and higher the snowman said look at this and the little boy looked down and he could see the town from where he lived far below with all the lights on in the different houses and from the street lights and the uh, and I, houses I, which are dark. I saw, I watched something with a talker with a snowman which was alive, which, which, which was actually didn't talk, I wanted to talk, but they, uh, they did talk, so mommy changed it. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, to get to the point, up and up they kept going, and as they went up, the town seemed to get smaller and smaller. Well, it was just because they were getting further away. You know, when you get further away from things, they look very small. And soon they could see lots of towns, and then they could see the whole country from up and up in the sky. Higher and higher they went. Where are we going, said the little boy. And the snowman said, to the moon, of course. Where else? To the moon, said the little boy. Nobody's been to the moon. Well, you don't know that, said the snowman. But you and I are right now on our way to the moon. And how, pretty soon. How about the atmosphere? How about the atmosphere? Yes. Well, because the snowman was holding the boy's hand, they were like surrounded by a, a bubble, a big balloon of gas, a bubble with air in it so they could breathe. A bit like being in a spaceman's helmet. So. Off they went in their bubble towards the moon, holding the hands, and the bubble was flying with the snowman and the little boy inside it. Because, because he blown the bubble with his, with his 
across the Capitol when he finally found it, and then he blew the bubble, and but a huge really big bubble, and to, and try and finally, and he he know how to do magic to make so. So he's and black and there was a hole in it to hold the car and then and it said I break it and it and it closed. Well in this case the bubble's not gonna get pricked, there'll be no hole in the bubble. Finally the bubble landed gently on the moon and the little boy and the snowman came out and each with a bubble over his head, because there's no air on the moon as you know, but there was a bubble round their heads so they could breathe. Uh, to keep them with lots of oxygen. And they walked around the moon and the snowman said, now you may think there's nothing on the moon but dust and rocks, but you'd be surprised what you find when you go into some of these tunnels on the moon. And off they started walking and finally the, the, the snowman said, here we are, we've arrived one of the tunnels. And he lifted a lid off and there was a tunnel with a ladder going down. Follow me, said the snowman. So the snowman started to climb down. Then, then they saw one of the clangers. And the little boy followed. And when they got to the middle of the, of the moon, well, it wasn't quite the clangers, but there were some moon creatures which look a bit like clangers uh, and what? made some funny noises like clangers, like... <laughs> and, and noises like that. So the snowman acted as translator and he translated to the little boy what the strange alien creatures were saying on the moon, or inside the moon, actually not on the moon, they were inside the moon. And the alien creatures said to the little boy, where do you come from? So the little boy said, I come from planet Earth. Have you ever been there? Oh, no, nobody can go there, said the aliens. It's too far away. Nobody could ever fly to Earth, just as nobody could ever get to the moon. Except, hang on a minute. You're here? How did you get here? So the little boy explained how he'd flown with the snowman. Well, the, the clanger-like aliens were very surprised to see a little boy on the moon. They were a bit like clangers. They are a little bit like clangers. They weren't exactly clangers, but almost the same. Yes. With long noses. They were, they were, they were like the clangers. They were quite like the clangers' nose. And then they said... It was quite the, 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 the size of the clang nose, but it was only half of the clang nose, but, not, but it wasn't. Yeah, a bit like that, yeah. Shall I call them clangers to make it easy? Maybe it's easy to relate yes. to that. I'll call them clangers. Yes. So the clanger said to the snowman, And what are you? And the snowman said, What, you've never seen a snowman before? No, said the clanger. We don't have any snow on the moon. Well, I never, said the snowman. Well, now you do. I'm a snowman. Now you have snow on the moon if I'm made of snow. Oh. Can I touch you, said the clanger. Of course you can, said the snowman. So the clanger put his hand on the snowman and took it away quick. Oh, it's so cold, it's so cold. He said, you're so cold, I can't touch you. Oh, said the snowman, don't be silly. It's not like you're touching a hot iron. No, 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 said the clanger. I could touch a hot iron, but I can't touch something cold. It is the opposite of Earth. On the Earth, you, I guess you can't touch hot things. Here on the moon, we can't touch cold things. Or it burns us. Oh, said the snowman. Well, I'll be careful, and I won't come too close to you, because I don't want to burn you. So, the little boy and the snowman carried on having a nice conversation with the clangers. After a while... The clanger said, here, let me give you a present. And the clanger went off to his cupboard and came back. And, so, and, he, and, and, he, and then he flew back to his planet Earth. Well, I haven't got to that bit yet. Okay, and gave the little boy a little pit, tiny picture frame. And in the middle of the picture frame, there was a picture of, guess what? Uh, the clanger. Yeah. So it was a picture of one of the clangers, of himself, in fact. And he said, here, take, take this as a present. The boy was very pleased. Oh, thank you so much. I can't wait till I show all my also, friends this. He also has a more, he, he, the, also, the clanger has a more friend. He has, some, he has a more kind of clangers. Yes, yes. So 
eventually the time came to fly back to Earth. So the snowman and the little boy climbed up the ladder to the uh, top of the tunnel on the moon and came out. And then the snowman made another big bubble and they started flying back to Earth through the outer space. Well, the little boy enjoyed it very much because he could look at the stars. And the little boy looked again at the, the picture of his friend of the clanger, the little, little tiny photo frame, no bigger than, than my watch, very small. And he, for safety, he put it into his pajama pocket and then wrapped the blanket around himself and off they flew back to the house. When they got back to the house, the, the, the door of the bedroom onto the balcony was still open. So the little boy and the snowman went inside the bedroom. Ooh, it was very cold in the bedroom because he'd left the window open such a long time. Oh, I better shut it, said the little boy. Well, it's so cold in here, there's, there's no risk of you melting. I guess I won't melt in this temperature, said the snowman. Before your room was too hot, but since we left the door open, it's become very cold. I'll be fine. And then the little boy, who'd been up half the night now, was starting to feel very tired, and he gave a very large yawn. It was all a dream. No, we haven't said it was a dream. And he put his head on the pillow, and the snowman said, Little boy, little boy, can I come in the bed with you? Yes, that'd be fun, said the little boy. So the snowman climbed in bed with the little boy. But then it was so cold, the snowman, the boy said, oh, no, no, you're too cold. Don't come in my bed. I don't like it. So the snowman said, all right. And he got out of bed and sat at the end of the bed next where the boy's was. But the boy was too cold. He couldn't even put his feet on the snowman. It was just too cold. But quickly, because the boy had been up all night, he quickly fell asleep. The next morning, when he woke, he his bed seemed very cold. He tried to turn over. And then he realised it wasn't cold, it was wet. Oh, oh no, he thought. What's happened? The bed is so wet. Well, where's my snowman? And he looked around for the snowman. And then he looked by the floor and his carpet, but he saw a, a puddle of water and indeed that's what was on the wall the bed was wet there was a puddle of water on the floor and there were a few christmas de decorations from the christmas tree like the long pointed nose the two eyes and a couple of sticks which were his arms a couple of sticks which were his legs and the uh, baubles for the christmas tree which were his buttons oh no thought the little boy my snowman must have melted yes and then he shivered because his bed was cold and wet just then, his mummy came in. Hello, little boy, she said. Did you sleep well? Mummy, I've had such an adventure. And then the mummy saw the pool of water on the floor. And then she immediately rushed over and put her hand on the bed and felt the wet sheets. Oh, no, she said. You're supposed to be a big boy. You're four years old now. And you've gone and done wee-wee in bed. I didn't, mummy, I didn't. She said, come on. Where's that water on the floor come from? Where's the bed? So the little boy started to tell the story of how the snowman came into the bedroom. Mummy listened carefully and smiled and she said, My little boy, you've been dreaming. I'm sure the snowman didn't really come in the house. That's just a dream. Yes. And what's happened? You've wet your bed, you've done wee wee in the bed. No! No, I didn't, Mummy, I didn't. I promise it must be the snowman. Mummy said, no, the snowman's not alive. Snowmen can't talk. Yes, Mummy, he talked, he flew. And we flew up to the moon and we went down a hole where the clangers live. Mummy said, all very interesting. But, no, my no, little boy, no. you have been dreaming. Then he pulled out some. And he said, no, no, the snowman in the then, garden. Then, Mummy, he, don't. then he pulled out his, in, in, out his pocket. We haven't got to that bit yet. Ah. Then the little boy said, No, no, I promise you the snowman wasn't on my bed. He must have melted in the night. That's where the water comes from. And the bobby said, Don't be silly. The snowman's out in the garden. Let's come and have a look. So she took the little boy to the window and looked outside. But there was no snowman in the garden. 
It was just a bare patch of grass where he had formerly stood and some footprints leading towards the house. And there were footprints made with twigs, the very same twigs that had formed, that had been used for the snowman's legs. Look, said the little boy, you can see where he's walked and you can see the twig footprints. Mummy laughed and said, I don't think so. I think that's when you made the snowman, you walked in the garden, made footprints. And it doesn't seem plausible that these footprints could belong to a snowman. You must have made them when you were in the garden yesterday. No, please, mummy, please, mummy, it's really true. I really had a snowman in, the, in my house. Well, mummy didn't seem to believe him until the little boy was scrubbing around his, uh, scrambling around in his pockets. And do you know what he found? Yeah. The, 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 the picture of the clanger. He found the picture of the clanger. Of the clangers. Of the clanger. He said, Mummy, Mummy, look, it really happened. Look, and he pulled out of his pocket the clangers picture. Mummy looked at it and she, where did you get this? On the moon, of course, where else? Mummy looked up at the moon and she said, but the moon is made of cheese. This doesn't look like cheese. No, Mummy, the moon is made of rocks and dust and things like that. But under the moon, there are tunnels and in the tunnels, there are clangers which live. And we had a nice conversation and we talked about I learned many, many things about the moon, talking to the clangers. I'm not sure if Mummy believed him or not, but she was very fascinated by the picture. I've never seen one of these creatures, she said. What is it? It's a clanger, said the little boy. Clangers, clangers. And she said, clangers to you too. I don't believe you. And there was nothing she could do, nothing he could do to make his mother believe him. She was sure that Somehow the um, uh, that somehow this photograph must have been made on Earth. Anyway, the next night, the little boy went to bed and hoped just no man would come back, but he didn't come back. When the little boy woke up in the morning, he went to see his mummy and said, Mummy, I promise you there was really a snowman here. Yes, yes, said the mummy. Just promises. We don't know that for sure. I think you've been dreaming. But what about this picture, mummy? What about this picture? She showed his mother. And she looked at it and she said, Yeah, that does look rather strange. I don't remember taking that. But it does look like you're on the moon. And it does look like you're with a friend, a clanger. I'll tell you what, she said. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt this time. What? What is it? What's the benefit of the doubt? Yes. It means that uh, you doubt what you say is true, but you'll give the benefit of the doubt. You'll believe it for a minute. So mummy pretends to believe the story. Yeah. And finally, after a while, he showed his daddy the photograph of the wood. And Daddy looked at it and knew immediately what it was. Daddy said, hey, what you've got there is a photograph of the mythical clangers. Must be worth a lot of money. You should save it till you're older. Okay. And then the boy took the clangers picture to the, the, the class, the, to the crash, and showed everybody there was one teacher who was a bit more intelligent than the rest. She said, have a look at my picture album. Yeah. And the little boy looked at the picture album and saw that some others shed their leaves in the winter. Some mother clangers. No, what are we talking about here? They so the little boy had a look at the picture with the money and said, that's a real life clanger. And another clanger took the picture of me. Mother did look at it very carefully because she'd never seen an insect like that before. But finally she came to accept that it must be true that the boy must have flown to the moon. Otherwise, how could he have a picture of himself with the clangor on the moon? It was impossible. So finally she realized he was telling the truth of where he'd been. The end.
And that's the end of the story. And I'm going to turn my phone off and I'm going to go to sleep too. Now, where's the um, recording device? Are you a nice night? Did you like that story, Aidan? Yeah. It was a nice story, wasn't it? I'll stop it now. You go to sleep. No more stories. Because it's bedtime. You know that, don't you? <laughs>